uh, today's lecture is going to be an interesting lecture okay because this uh, the topics that we have taken for this lecture is going to help you in your career in android development wherever you are it will help you okay so the two major parts of today's lecture topic that i'll tell you describe here okay first we will understand the build process of your android application okay and second we will understand about memory management okay so i'll try to explain you the important principles and concept for that but first i will start with the build process okay so how does android has designed its build system that uh, first of all we will have to look at java okay so java revolutionized when it came into early days it revolutionized uh, the application building okay why it did so it java made the application as platform independent okay so you can write your code and you should not worry where it will run on your android or your windows or mac os okay so that is the powerful thing that java brought and android actually embraced that approach okay so uh, in java i'll give you an overview of how this build system work so basically you write your source code okay in dot java file and then it is compiled so java c is the compiler which converts your dot java file into can anybody help me with the answer your source code dot java file get converted into what after the compilation yeah so it's byte code which is your dot class file okay so whenever you build your dot java source code it converts into dot class file okay which is your byte code so what i am discussing here is for java right now okay now this byte code can be shipped to multiple operating systems multiple machines it can be shipped okay so it can be shipped for example windows okay can be in mac os and other systems as well okay okay now what happens is that when your bytecode is distributed to various machines your machine actually runs your code in your their native instructions okay all the machines has their cpu architecture that runs the instructions in a different format and your dot class file is then converted into their specific format and this role is done by your jvm okay. so jvm makes your byte code independent from machines so what happens is that when you ship your byte code and suppose you are running your application on windows so jvm has the responsibility to run this byte code what do i mean by running this byte code so there is one thing which is called jit okay jit is just in time compiler we can say so this component jvm uses to convert your byte code in real time okay suppose one class is loaded in memory and you need to run that in windows so jit it will convert your that part of your byte code into machine code okay so byte code to machine code conversion is done by jit which is a component in jvm so this is the main component which makes your application run on various platforms okay so this is the solution provided by the java so basically what i told is that you write your source code in dot java file it is compiled by java c compiler which converts your source code dot java file into dot class file which is called as a byte code okay now whenever your byte code is shipped to other systems for example windows mac os or other systems then there is a layer which is called jvm 
JVM act as a layer between your OS and your program. So your byte code is converted into machine code in real time when your application runs. And this is done by the JIT just in time. Okay. So now, so this byte code, I'll just give you um, a text for it. It is a highly optimized set of instruction designed to be executed by the Java runtime okay by the java virtual machine okay java runtime is a system which is controlling these conversions and running okay now so suppose this was the model of your java build system if i take it in android okay android is also in some way runs on jvm for example let's assume so can we ship our byte code in similar fashion for Java? This is the first question for Android. Okay, so in Android, you will see that this system has to be modified because there are a lot of things that comes into picture. For example, your your different mobile phones have architecture. For example, ARM V7, ARM V8, X86 x86 64 okay and mips okay so there are various cpu architectures for your android devices and we need to write our application that runs on all of them okay so now there can be another conditions for example your java file your java application is there but you may be required in your programming career further you can find this use case that you may have to ship native code as well native code is C or C++ code okay so you can write your Android application that has both Java source code and the C++ source code okay now you need to ship this application so that mobile application mobile devices can run okay so Java will be compiled by Java C okay, into bytecode okay. and your native will be compiled into diff different architecture binaries. Okay. For example, ARM v7 there will be a different binary called binary 1, binary 2, binary 3. For different CPU architecture your native code will be compiled differently. So you will have to ship all these things in your application. Now, since suppose your, your device is VRM, ARM v7 and you are shipping the binaries for all of them. So this is an overhead. Okay, This will make your app size larger. So there is something called split. Okay, So you can create various versions of your Android application Okay, that will contain for example binaries and byte code for one devices okay so this is the build system that will come into picture when you are creating your android application okay so now we will see in detail about the android infrastructure for doing this okay so now let's take this was the java example that runs on jvm now let's have a look at how Android deals with this problem. So you have your source code which is your application okay it will be both Java and native. Now let's suppose you are writing in Java and you can also write in Kotlin. Okay, Java is compiled by Java C and Kotlin is compiled by Kotlin C. Okay. So now after compilation, they both result into bytecode. Okay. So Kotlin and Java are producing the same bytecode. So in some way you can say that Java and Kotlin are synonymous. Okay. Now this bytecode can run for example in non-android devices okay let's suppose so 
In non-Android devices, it will run on JVM, Java Virtual Machine. Okay. In Android devices, there is further processing that happens for this bytecode. Okay. So, for example, in Android, okay. So, there is a DEX compiler. So, your bytecode which is generated by these compilers go into another step of compilation which is done by your DEX compiler. Okay. And this DEX compiler produces DEX file. Okay. So, this DEX file is a single file that has all this bytecode optimized for your Android application. Okay. What is do I mean by optimization? So basically uh, there is one way which DEX compiler helps that it formats, it makes this bytecode to run in the resource constraint environment. For example, your Android devices runs on system resources which are constrained by battery, which are constrained by processing power. So it needs to take a different approach. So they use register in CPU. Okay. So DEX compiler optimizes your bytecode so that it can utilize the register of the CPU so that it can make the processing efficient. Okay. So this will generate DEX file is basically Delvic bytecode. Okay. So your bytecode get converted into Delvic bytecode by DEX compiler and this comes into a file which is called a DEX file. Okay. Now, this DEX file has certain limitation. Okay, so one limitation is number of method count should be 64 less than 64k. So this single file only supports your bytecode compilation only when it has method count less than 64k. But if you have more than this, then you can create multiple desk DEX file, and then you will have to use tool for multi DEXing. Okay. Now, so till here we have generated a bytecode which is optimized for your Android devices. Now in order to run this bytecode in JVM we were using JIT. Okay, That was converting your bytecode into machine code in real time as the application was running. But in Delvic there it takes two different approaches. Okay. So I'll describe these two approaches to you. Okay, so you have your Delvic bytecode. So there are two runtime environment you can say. One is your DVM. Okay. The name is synonymous with JVM, J and D, Java virtual machine. This is Delvic virtual machine. Okay. And then you have art. Okay. This is Android runtime. Now, DVM is basically exact, like in various terms, exactly similar to JVM. Okay, it also uses JIT and does the same thing as JVM does. That is, it converts the bytecode into machine code when your application is running in real time. Okay, works same as JVM. Okay. Now, so there, this was pre lollipop era, okay, and this came after with lollipop, okay, after, with and after lollipop, we have art available with us, okay. So the potential problem of Delvic virtual machine was that since everything was done in real time, so your application launch time was higher, okay. So in order to make your Android application more responsive, 
you we shifted to art also art has some optimization related to garbage collection as well okay now art has one concept it has aot this is ahead of time so so you can figure out this is ahead of time and this was just in time so what the name is denoting is that ahead of time means compile this byte code in single single go as opposed to just in time so all your application byte code when you install your application will be converted into binaries okay specific to your device and these binaries will be saved to your device internal storage and then your execution will be much faster because it does not have to do real time compilation okay plus launch time will be much faster than the earlier approach okay so this is the difference between aot and jit okay so but there is one more problem which get associated with aot okay the problem is that since on install application is install we are converting into binaries so there is a significant time it takes to first launch your application your app will be installed then it will be converted into binaries and then it will run so initial run time launch time will be much larger so with android nugget with android nugget we have a hybrid system hybrid system uses jit and aot both okay so what it does is it does not convert all your application into binaries at install time but it allows the jit to dynamically in when your application is running to convert it into the binaries but what aot does as the conversion is done it caches it into your internal memory so for the next time all the binaries will be built up so this solves your first launch problem of your android application okay so basically this was the picture what from writing your source code from running your application the process your app goes through okay this interesting that such different processes are actually happening we generally are only concerned with writing our source code but there are lot of details that go into behind the picture to run your application and why this these are important because optimization can only be done in the source code when you are familiar with the functioning of all these components okay so there is a saying that i took this quote from a friend of mine that making an android app is easy okay but making a super high quality and memory efficient android app is not and the aim of this boot camp is to inculcate this habit in all of you to think of optimization think of the under the hood picture that goes in your application creation okay so this will differentiate you from rest of the people who are doing android okay now so so you see we have java and then kotlin is the latest language that we are using both are producing the same bytecode so what is the difference you, you now you have worked on the project so you know that there is a huge difference in terms the language is defined so kotlin is more high level okay than java java itself high level but there is more abstraction done by the kotlin so as more abstraction will come into the picture productivity will increase okay but insightfulness will decrease and as you see if you work on the machine layer that is you work on the, the for example native code you will have more in for knowledge about the about the how system works but less productivity so you have to balance both the world so a good android developer actually embraces the abstraction okay but also investigate the implementation 